one, and we are up. Hello, everybody. I am a second there, Chris. Hello, everyone. Hope you're doing well. It is a wonderful morning here in Vancouver, Canada. And we have a very special guest. Our New Zealand correspondent uh, in Eratoa is happy. He's going to tell me how to say that properly in a second, I'm sure. Um, is happy. We're going to happily watch the sunrise, the first sunrise of tomorrow in our future as being future cannabis project i thought this would be a great way to start our first conversations um, as we are going to do this as a weekly feature called coffee and canna uh, coffee for can cannabis for breakfast uh, where we're going to talk we're going to go from big gardens to small gardens all sorts of gardens but today we're going to start by watching the sunrise in new zealand with our amazing daca christ who will be showing us his beautiful hemp farm that he works on and volunteers at as well as the sunrise so daca welcome as you can see he's already got you know i'm just going to make you the full screen there because you got the beautiful sound i can hear the birds chirping in the background i can i can see the sun starting to rise there why don't you tell open up by saying hello Tell us a little bit about yourself and, and, and why this sunrise is so special. Because it is. It's, 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 it's probably the first special sunrise of the year. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. Good morning, Future Grow. Here I am struggling just like in Vietnam. <laughs> I'm raised up in my hammock, in my camo gear. You will be able to see my camo gear a little bit better when the sun rises. We have a beautiful full moon, and I'm overlooking, as I have done for a while, overlooking the hemp plot, cannabis plot. Luckily, this season, I'm comfortably wide open in a hammock, predicting this cannabis field here that already has a fence around it and a governmental approved certificate. Don't we just love the paperwork? Well, it's so, pretty cool because you're because you're actually a lot of people that might not know this, you know, who, who might just kind of hop on for the first time. They're like, "What? Why? How are they doing this in the middle of winter?" And we're New Zealand's in in the southern hemisphere, so it's the opposite season. It's middle of, it's middle of summer for them now, isn't it? Uh, that is absolutely correct. Um, we planted our seeds in October. And they're already uh, three months in um, and looking good. Some of the sativas are just starting to bud, or as we now call narrow leaf, uh, narrow leaf um, are a lot taller, sitting at anywhere between nine foot and 12 foot with little buds on them. But yes, as you indicated, the sun will be rising here in Aotearoa, and that is the Maori word for New Zealand. I sometimes mispronounce my native tongue also, so no offense taken by anybody who attempts to say some of the words that I say, because I sometimes can't say them either, my good friend. And so, yes, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Christ. I am a legacy farmer of over 20 years. I have been... <sighs> Volunteering here at Makarika. There's your beautiful is, face. <laughs> your, there's there's room for you over here, my brother. When you come and visit, this is your hammock. <laughs> you know, we can both anybody. Once we open the COVID boundaries on our beautiful little island, as you're all aware. The globe's got COVID and we've shut our borders down to all those foreigners. So when we open our borders to our friends, um, get in touch with me. Come and visit us at the wellness retreat. So as well as living on a cannabis plantation, uh, it is also a wellness retreat. So as we all know, cannabis brings wellness. Here's our little, uh, little shed down there. Well, wellness cool. in, in the bush. So Very cool. So the first sunrise, as you mentioned, this mountain here called Mount Hakarangi is the first mountain in the planet, on the planet, to see the sunrise even. And historically, if we go back through our traditional customs, it is where Maui has parked his waka. So a waka is a boat, a canoe, and Maui, just like the 
island of Maui, uh, similar character. Um, Maui found Aotearoa when traveling in his waka, and he fished up New Zealand out of the ocean. It's a long story about how Maui and his brothers went fishing one day and found this beautiful island, which is called Aotearoa. And the reason being, Aotearoa is called the land of the long white cloud. As you can see just over here, we've got some, oh, just over here, mm -hmm, here, we've got some misty mountains. We get some beautiful fog on these hills, being that that Mount Hifangi is the tallest mountain in our country. And the sunlight should appear on it, mm, you know, any 10 or minutes or five or minutes or so. Never can tell. But yes, I personally have been a cannabis farmer for 20 illicit years. This is my fifth allegedly, license. Allegedly. Alle allegedly. <laughs> if FBI, DEA, CIA, um, Mossad, all the others. Um, big shout out. <laughs> metaverse. <laughs> big shout out to the Metaverse, who are like obviously one of our keen followers, international. Um, so, yeah. Allegedly have been using medicinal cannabis to solve my sciatic nerve problems. I suffered from a snowboarding injury in my 20s and found that cannabis enabled me to function as a trade qualified uh, carpenter and still have no pain when I worked, which is obviously what life's all about. So, so wait, you said you had a snowboard injury. What, what, what did you injure? Was it your back? Did you hurt a knee or you sprained an ankle? Like, my, it... my spine. So oh, wow. an L5, yeah, L4, L5 spinal compression. So I suffer from sciatic nerve, which is like tingly pain stuff that runs down the back of my left knee. It's just a nummy, achy, you know, it's a trap nerve. Bulging disc. So... I've been using the sacred herb for 20 years, over 20 years, and yeah, it's been a miracle. Obviously, I could have done more physio and more asanas and salutes to the sun and more yoga and stretching, but as a tradesman with a family and a allegedly secondary uh, income, um, need, need to like, you know, set more time to the plants. Nobody likes to see dead plants wilting. Nope. So, no, nope, that's right. No. Nope. I don't know. Can I? I can zoom in. Here we go. That oh, there. Look at that. Oh, that's the moon. That's the moon set. So, so cool. you can just see that. Almost beautiful. Can almost. See almost. It. <laughs> Sorry you about know, that. We we'll blame cool Samsung. Let me let me put you as full screen too. Maybe. Only, oh yeah, you can see it if I go full screen. So you can see the moon setting there in the background. Um, so yeah, like this is a live video. We're, we're, we're happy to be there. So Christ, this yes, is sir. our first video ever. So Woo! we're essentially designing the whole format of the concept of this. So Pioneers, my question my brother. is, well, the title is, is Cannabis for Breakfast. So Ooh. my assumption is that we need to consume some. But my question is, are you willing to consume some cannabis for breakfast with me? I am willing to partake spiritually with cannabis with you. Currently, I haven't had any prep time, being that it's a five o'clock in the morning to uh, pre-roll. I already woke well, up okay. at four twenty and had two cones. So uh, I, I haven't had the opportunity I'm literally to roll the... anything up either. So we can both take the time and and, and roll up I'm... a little bit and chat. I'm literally in the bush, London. You know that. <laughs> oh, you got no papers. You didn't bring your equipment nope. with you. Gosh, damn I didn't right. bring my equipment, bro. I've got so much <laughs> inbuilt cannabinoids. I'm like Obelix from Asterix and Obelix. I don't get to go see get a fix for my magic potion. I just <laughs> tap into the already resourced uh, cannabinoid medicines that flow through my blood. So I am enriched <laughs> with cannabinoids. I. Will uh, love to watch you on your bubbler, your pipe, your your wife's <laughs> I, pipe, I your wife's vape. bong. I vaporize. Oh, vape, and vape it, for yeah. breakfast. It's a volcano vaporizer, and I run the tube. It's got a whip on it, and I run the tube through a water bong, and I find it like... So there was a product that came out a little while ago. I don't have it near me because it breaks all the time, and, I, and I've gotten... I just kind of keep it in the corner because they're break, broken all the time. But I have... <laughs> um, Great sales, this... hmm? Great sales pitch. Great sales pitch. 
Yeah, well, I love I love water bongs, and there yes. was a vaporizer, a dry herb vaporizer that got released a couple years ago. And I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't suggest people to go grab it. It's the cloudiest nine. Um, the big issue was is it's a water bong that's a portable water bong that's a vaporizer, but it's it's a portable water bong. So there's there's water and there's plugs and there's it's electrical. So th- they're too close together right now. I think personally for that <laughs> technology to work consistently. <laughs> so often the, it would stop charging after a little while. So I went through like two or three units, and they have a two they have a three year warranty. So it's like I ended up getting a new unit every six months or something like that. So it's just ended up not being worth my time but i'm like this is it this is this is another flavor profile one of the big things is vaporizing i find allows you to kind of control that temperature and get those aromatic molecules like all those volatile terpenes that we were talking about last night on the show um rolling and 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 ingest those instead of just combusting Um, and i find if you combust a lot it can be a little bit harder on your lungs so i'm like i like vaporizing but if you take a just a dry vape like even just the bags of these, they get a little bit hard. Um, and, and I find once you run it through a bubbler or, or, or a water bong through a whip, you really clean out that, you, you really get rid of that toughness that's in there and you're able to really taste full flavor of, of the ca- cannabis. So it, for me, I don't think there's a pure way if you're going to look at, at, at tasting cannabis in, in, in dry hat herb form, um, for me, this is the purest and, and best way to get the, the whole cannabis flavor profile. I'll show you what I happen to be lucky, lucky enough to smoke on today. Um, this is actually the last run of this specific pheno. This is the Lemon Kush headband um, that I am that I do love. But we will be dropping off of the 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 setup here. Um, it's quite yummy, very delicious. If the fo- camera focuses there, yet. Yeah. As you can see, it's very, very crystally and very, very, very nice. We've run it about four times, uh, four times through my tent. Um, and it, it's produced nicely and it's quite tasty, but it's just, I have another pheno of it that's just a little bit better. Um, so it's always exciting to be able to do that. So why don't you, your, your camera's gone a little funky. Oh, you've dropped out on me. So we'll wait for him to come back. How's everybody doing today? Is anybody, what's everybody smoking on this morning? Who would appear he's coming back. We'll let him get back on screen here and take a moment. There you are. Camera's functionality. There you are. <laughs> Just as you said, dropping off. <laughs> don't say dropping off again, yo. <laughs> don't say it. Don't do it. It'll, it'll happen. Don't say it. <laughs> Is in Nepali. So we got a few people in chat here, which is super exciting. I mean, that's just just such a beautiful uh, angle there. We'll we'll enjoy that. So once we get that sun risen up, we'll have to go and see. So you can you tell? Why don't we talk a little bit about like your farm and gardening method? Actually, you know what? I would just like to know, Christ, because you have a really incredible story about yourself and and who you are and and how you came to here. Now, I know that's a big question and a big ask, but I think you're the right person to ask a big question to like that because you'll be able to take it and <laughs> run. Usually, I would ask this question like it, when I do the interviews with like we've had BC Bubble, BC Bubble Man on and a few other people. Usually, when I would do this, I try and guide it a little bit, but I, I, I every time we talk, it's fairly genuine and it, it, we're really able to keep that conversation flowing. So I was like, fucking. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me about what uh, what what driven you to this exact point in time, because I believe that's a really amazing story. Mike, check one two one two. I'm gonna yeah. come through from the whole damn crew. You got that? <laughs> so, being a third generation entertainer, second generation tradesman, first generation cannabis farmer, cannabis political activist, politician. I would like to say that I've been listening to Rastafarian music. Bob Marley is like one of my grandfathers. His words seem like a wise elder to me. I take appreciation of his push for the ganja for Jamaica and the planet. And I feel that as a cannabis user or abuser, as my parents and uh, the unknowns uh, like to say, you know, here we are abusing our cannabis, feeling good about our lives while they take their drugs recreationally. 
tobaccos and alcohols. Let's not get started. I'm pro-choice. I'm all for all people enjoying their lives, however they see fit. So that's why I joined, recently joined Aotearoa Legalized Cannabis Party. Because my father had always said to me that, as a construction worker, you know, is it really safe smoking cannabis all the time, coming to work high, getting high at lunchtime, allegedly? And I tell him, after my, after my spinal compaction, my dad, this is the only way I can function at work without having pain. And I like it here in New Zealand. My father said, if I don't like the laws here in New Zealand, why don't I go to a different country? And I say, because this is my country, Dad. I recently told him three years ago when I joined Aotearoa Legalized Cannabis Party. I flipped it on him and said, you've always told me if I didn't like the laws in this country, I should leave to another country that allows cannabis consumption more safely. And I always responded, no, I've got my family here. And... Now I've done the man thing and stepped up to the plate. And I use my entertainer's uh, skill set. I might not be very hot at the moment because it's five in the morning. But my entertainer's skill set allows me to throw freely, also listening to hip-hop music for 30-odd years of my life. I am a lyricist. My name was Chris. I changed it to Dr. Christ. When I went to the Dactory, which was in Auckland, which is our biggest city, in New Zealand, over 1 million people. Ooh, what a big city. <laughs> and and Dr. Green, formerly known as Ken Morgan, decided to open up Aotearoa's first cannabis smoking club. Upon first entry, I couldn't believe my eyes. I'd walked into Amsterdam. It is called the Dactory because... In olden times, in the 70s and 80s and 90s, code word for going out the back and having a smoke with your friends was, would you like to come for a deck? So that's about D-A-K. And we are decktivists because we're standing up for the right to consume deck, as everybody has before. So upon entry to the dactory, I knew I was home. Everybody in there, didn't matter how old you were, as long as you were over 18. There was elderly grandparents, aunties, cousins, nephews, white, black, yellow, green, blue, you know, all the colors of the human spectrum. And I felt home. <laughs> so I offered my skill set of DJing and didn't leave for a year and a half until it was closed down by the government. We were openly selling... $20 grams over the counter in glass jars. You're allowed to smell, just like the old days, you're allowed to smell those glass jars and look right at those nugs and say, can I have a gram of that one, please, sir? They'd weigh it up in front of you. 1.0 grams, $20 in the till. There it is. That's how it all started. So that was my home for a year and a half. I was the resident DJ providing uh, yeah, great music to keeping the crowds entertained while they puffed and herbed. So the Dactory can be found on the YouTube channel. If you type in the Dactory New Zealand cannabis, you'll see some videos. Um, I got into cultivating cannabis, like I said, like most of us farmers who try to source good medicine and then only got a guy that's got a guy that knows a guy that can get some. And it's like, oh, yeah, and, and when's that going to come? And how much is it? And why does it taste like dirt, not <laughs> lemons or strawberries? You or mean cheeses. you don't like those dirt terps? I think someone said in the chat last night there was someone going on. And, it's, and they were saying, you know, if plants absorbed the flavor in the dirt, <laughs> all weed would taste like dirt. Because <laughs> we were chatting about, like, using, using like, terpenes. I've tried that, London. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 tried, I tried, in the instead of a flush, in my early, early days, 20 years back, you know, High Times magazine, obviously it was written somewhere. I didn't come up with the idea myself. Um, I crushed, went to the frozen food section in the Whole Foods shop crushed up the blueberries and mixed berries frozen run them through my water made a nice uh, blueberry slurry 
And no, I didn't create Aotearoa's first blueberry cross. It was still a juicy fruit, uh, juicy fruit strain that, yes, did taste like juicy fruit chewing gum. Um, and it had blue uh, veins in its leaves. So that's where the col coloration entered the plant. Just like when you've taken, I don't know if you've done experimentations with sunflowers. If you cut the stems off a growing sunflower, you can dip that into different colors. And the sunflower petals will change colors depending on what color dye water you have. Yeah, we did so that similar with celery to when that. I was growing up in, in school. We'd there put you it go. In a stick of celery and, and you would put like blue dye or, or whatever dye that was in there. Yeah, the, the, the serum, like especially with that type of scientific process, like the serum like sounds there. So I wonder like what would using something like a, an essence or like the, the byproduct of, of creating an essential oil would have on that pro on your final product because i mean like it, it there's a lot of uh, of stuff there and you know if we can carry dye through a plant through this type of system can we do that but my my question my, my always wonder is like because plants will naturally you know change that color um in in the fall they'll, they'll do that depending on the stressors and temps and stuff like that there is some some blue tones and hues that can come out. My wonder is, does the root system filtrate those 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 things better than we think and perceive through just that cutting um, scientific test? Because essentially, we're just cutting right through the plant and opening up all the water, all the waterways. Open main up the vein. Yeah, exactly. We're opening up the main vein. So that's a question. Like, are we? Or is it maybe we're 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 supposing stuff? I think it's it, it's always such a cool thing and. I, I, I used to be of the proponent, like, like no, it's, it can't be true unless there's, like, something somebody's done, and, 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 like, stringently so. And I think that was my food science background and, and, and my, 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 my desire to be in that space. Um, so I think that's why I always went that route. And I, I real cannabis has humbled me in, in a way that a lot of other things haven't, you know, um, it allowed me to go, hey, you know what, there's there's so much more to this. Maybe I'm not ingesting cannabis, you know, for this, that or the other. Maybe I'm not just ingesting it out of joy. Maybe there's some more reason. Like, let's look at those things and let's look at the past and look at our interconnectivity. Like, I, I kind of want to dig into because you we were you were talking about your father and, and changing the laws and, and, and your political point, which I think you were getting just about running into the story of why you kind of went into that direction. But I, I wanted to touch on that a little bit because I think there's an interesting point there in, in, in just the lack of education. Like there was such suppressed information and separation that we thought, you know, cannabis is this godforsaken plant from somewhere else when there's so much of it in our culture um, all the time. Like even if you look and dig into like some, some of the old culinary literature, um, you can see hemp being used, cannabis seed being used. You can see it in in a few different spaces. But even then, the the culinary industry has quieted. You, you're not going to see, you know, Escoffier uh, written uh, hemp recipes. Like it's just not going to be commonly spoken about. You're not going to you're not going to see that stuff going on. So we 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 separated ourselves so much from this plant, and I, it, to the point that our parents, our elders thought think this way and I, I just think it's so perplexing and, and i wonder what what ultimate cause i think the sun's starting to raise up over there but you want to get into that what kind of put you to move it because i like that point i think that's that's super honorable and, and and an amazing point of perspective you're right like there are the people that will leave a country because they need it to they need it, need it to change and then, or you can make the decision to be the action of that change. And I think, you know, a lot of a lot of the people that we have on the show on the shows here on Future Cannabis Project represent taking that initiative and stepping and taking that change. So, man, uh, thanks for being on the first episode because I think I think it's interesting to be part of that. So, you want to talk about that transition, like how the legalization was went and what made you kind of push into that zone in, in New Zealand? Because a lot of people, like, I mean, you're literally on the other side of the world right now. A lot a lot of evil don't even have a connection with that and i'd love to be the able to struggle is real yeah <laughs> send seeds send seeds um <laughs> no no don't send seeds we've got high quarantines and customs because we're what is called a beautiful little 
uh, landlocked island and there's three main island the north island and the south island and Stewart island which is like right down the bottom um so yes uh, as you say most people take the money and run or take the easy option um i've been a studier of martial arts uh taekwondo practitioner for 20 years um brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner for seven years uh, the warrior's code of ethic is to stand up for the weak and vulnerable. And if you're slightly crazy enough and feel that you are on the side of right, as we all are now finding out we are and were on the side of right, being that scientific journals <clears throat> on the regular are pumping out white papers saying, cannabis science medicine this, cannabis science medicine that. And I just have, you know, held that in my heart through my own experiences and my own truths as we all have witnessed uh, miraculous recoveries or the the benefits of cannabis are second to none through experiment so although bro science the mockery of bro science has been around for a while um, citizen science would be better to be called actual factual data that you have experienced and you and we must all spread that truth. So as I have experienced my truth through my own healing and the anti-inflammatory properties of the cannabis medicines I ingest, um, I like to preach that to whoever's listening. Um, not wanting to um, step on anybody else's toes and parallel it to tobacco smoking, ra di rah you get your cigarettes, we have heavily branded cigarettes now for sale in our country that literally says smoking kills, smoking causes cancer, your smoking can cause impotence. And they print this on the label and that's the warning, you know. Um, yet still, cannabis is illegal. But as a true believer in the future, um, I see obviously consumable hemp products um, to be the next big market and I want to make bank. No, um, I want a safer, healthier alternative for my people. Um, my mother is a heavy drinker, heavy smoker. She's got you know, blood clot issues. She's, and she's 66 years old. She's deteriorating rapidly. She has some serious arthritis in her hands. Her knuckles are swollen. She didn't do a shout out to me. I saw her six months ago maybe and saw her bent up knuckles and i was like mum what is happening to your knuckles she goes oh, i'm in pain it's not cool I'm like yeah did i not tell you several times that like if you're ever in pain source me out for some good ganja she's like oh well, well i don't want to smoke any ganja smoke any dope i'm like no we're not going to get you to smoke dope mum i'm going to infuse the cannabinoid medicines in some oil. And you can rub that oil on your hands daily, ritualistically, as soon as you wake up at lunchtime, after you wash your hands for lunch and before you go to bed. She did that for less than three days, waking up feeling amazing with no hand pain. And I said to her, preach. My mum is now converted into cannabinoid pain relief medicine. She still doesn't want to smoke it due to the intoxicating effect of THC and the mind-altering, slightly altered state of consciousness that some of us like to explore. Each to their own. Plant medicines should be used, not abused. So I've converted my mum. Haven't yet converted my dad. I think it's going to take some form of uh, financial growth more than just volunteering on my on my friend's cannabis field, living my dream. You know, I think he wants to see me with some retirement money or at least another house to live in because I'm currently <laughs> homeless. I lost, I, lost my old, I lost my old home, me and my business partner, purchased a property, a beautiful property. I wanted to have a sustainable permaculture food forest slash hemp field slash indoor grow greenhouse operation for medicinal cultivation. Um, the New Zealand government changed the laws on me and I was no longer allowed to supply my green waste, my cannabinoid enriched leaves to my what would have been healthy hempy hens. So they've recently just uh, sold some hemp 
Iggs in Lancaster, California, I do believe. The first hemp eggs with higher enrichment of omega threes and sixes. Um, there's no claim to whether there's CBD in the eggs. They weren't testing for that. That's the fear of our government once again, or the restrictions in place. They don't want me to sell THC eggs to the kids. They don't want people to be eating THC enriched chicken meat, as we were referring to the dirt going up into our plants and our plants all tasting like dirt. The uh, wise elders that run governmental departments have thought that a restriction on feeding cannabis plants to livestock would be a good stop so that we can't all get high on our New Zealand-grown beef and our New Zealand-grown chickens. So that set my business partner, who was a registered nurse and who felt my dream of uh, medicinal cannabis, but the struggle is real down here with everybody knows red tape, this, that, and the other, somebody stipulating this, somebody stipulating that, rules changes each and every moment. <clears throat> so she uh, decided to sell our property, and I was like, now where do I go? <laughs> it it yeah. came up in my network that the Eastern Institute of Technology, our local, uh, what's it called, not a university, the one under a university, a technological school, or... What do you um, call it in Canada? Oh, I don't know. Um, trade school, I guess. Maybe trade school, maybe college. Um, yeah. Like, are you talking about like more, more of like a working school where you would learn about like construction yes. and farming? So that would be like a yes. more, more in Canada. We trade would call school. that like a trade school. But at the same time, like there's scientific courses on on like you can go to UBC for agronomy and, and botany and stuff like that. So there there's a wide uh array there but yeah i guess i guess the best comparison okay. would be a trade school um although okay. there are a lot more university programs doing that doing that type of thing and 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 while we mentioned and while you're on this subject with the whole separation of the plant and some of that weirdness that happens i mean the same thing's happening here in canada like we, we're, we're not using the whole plant where we're like we take we, it's it's bud biomass and then everything else has gotten rid of um, it just, it doesn't make sense. Any it's like sustainable be, sense. <laughs> it's, it makes no sustainable sense. Like we want to talk about carbon emissions and this and that and the other. And and then we're going to go, hey, well, let's open up this whole new industry. But you have to throw out half of it. Just throw it away. It's in, in, in a fill, landfill. Like, you, like this weirdness. It just doesn't make a a lot of sense but keep keep it on keep it going on so you 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 found this so, amazing place it was so the Techno institute of technology had already been running for five years running a course in sustainable primary productions but here in ruatoria on the east coast of aotearoa we the tutors decided because they are allegedly all legacy farmers over here on the east coast um, to use the plant of their choice as hemp cannabis. So our tutor is a well-known Rastafarian activist and his wife. They ran the course for five years. Um, last year was the first year that they opened it up to students from outside of the district. The big city folk came down. Well, me and another one of my friends. <laughs> moved to an off-grid location in the middle of nowhere, like literally live eight hours away from my youngest born child. I know London, you're a family man. You know how hard that is to have a, a family yeah. member that you want to cuddle and kiss and read bedtime stories to live so far away. So, But I'm here sacrificing that relationship, sadly, and the relationship I have with my other children to move my culture in the right direction towards the light. So you got to do what you got to do, eh, man? Like, like you Every said, day. Some, some people move countries to make sure that they personally are self-insecure themselves. I am self-insecure knowing that I'm here planting the ganja for myself and for my people. And sometimes and I hope we got to do, when... do the best we can for the people ahead of us, right? 
That's like, right. You know, and I hope that when my <laughs> children become young adults, they can see the sacrifices and the childhood neglect, as we call it, um, that I was always there for them and I am always, am always there for them. It's just that I'm eight hours away on a hemp field, off-grid, farming thousands of cannabis plants for the people. You know, you so know my parents separated sun- when I was young, and I, I, I lived a, a, an eight-hour plane ride away from my dad and that type of situation you still have great connectivity with your family being a little bit away so I, sorry to interrupt there but I, I no no thank sure. you for your positive thank you for your positive affirmation of confidence i know that i'm on the right path but it is always good to hear those with the similar similar parallel moral code of you got to do what you got to do you got to stand up for the weak and innocent and vulnerable and here i am making myself weak and innocent and vulnerable living off grid on a hemp farm. So here's our wellness center retreat. We've got some lovely prayer flags, everything. Uh, so this, like I was saying, I am a tradesman. I am helping to build this thing. Whoop, whoop. I'm also building some huts. So as a wellness retreat center, we're building some, how many, uh, 2.4 meters. Translate that into feet for the Americans, would you, London? Uh, what, meters into feet? 2.4 meters, yes. Uh, I can do that, actually. That would be about six, seven, eight, nine, yeah. f- eight, eight feet, eight, eight and a half feet, somewhere in eight and a half to nine, eight, my guess. I don't, I, okay. I, I don't know if I can do that. I'm going to try. <laughs> okay, all good. So I'm building a few little <laughs> huts, a few little huts. For myself, the volunteer, who's currently either sleeping in a hammock or sleeping in my tent. Um, And they will be put up into the darkness of this hill where people can rest and meditate and be one with, as you said, the birds and the cicadas. They'll be up soon. Um, So here's our fence. This fence keeps the deers out. You'll see. Hazard area. Think safe. So I better close the door just in case, you know, health and safety. <laughs> yeah, gotta, gotta be health and safety. Yeah, that's that's, that's, a, that's a great lock too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Bingo! Uh, like I go. said, we live off grid. Everybody seen building in Alaska? We always return to that. Uh, it's just like building in Alaska. Our closest town, city, resources is two hours away. We do obviously live in a small village for village things, but if you want building materials or a new latch or a padlock or things, it's two hours drive and wow. two hours back. That is that. You know, I see the thing is I've really been debating the whole rural thing because I, I just like, as you can <clears> tell <throat> by my life and what I do is I'm obsessed with plants. <laughs> it's like it's, I can't help. My, I can't stop myself anymore. That whole extreme ruralness. I'm like so forgetful with stuff. I would like, I would go to yeah. the grocery store and forget milk, and then drive all the way home and be like, "Oh, I got to go get milk." So like, I would, I would need to be able to like totally manage my whole life in one go. Look at that. Is that a alyssum that I'm seeing a lot of? Like this? Is no. Of- that was that was clover. Okay. It's all just closed at the moment. They'll pop open a little bit better. They're all wet. wet. And we've got lots of yarrow. Lots of yarrow. Yarrow is such an interesting plant that I've been reading about. That's got a lot of medicinal properties. So this is kind of like a free land, like you let it kind of go here. Yes. Um, The boys do come through with the weed whacker and do a chop and drop system. Um, Because before this was turned into something that things grew on, it was that bush. Okay. So they, so they basically got some land off their brother and just chopped it. We've planted over 2,000 New Zealand natives. Um, so there's 2,000 New Zealand natives all planted up through the wellness area around the hemp field. These are New Zealand native trees. Um, that's another New Zealand native tree block. Um, so we're doing our best to reintegrate the land. So as tons of whenua, um, that is a person of the land, and I'm here as the kaitiaki, which is the guardian or steward of the land. And so That's it is it. our job to – this right here, big bad boy, is a – take a guess. Oh, man. I, like, the video is a little bit fuzzy, ah. but it looks like a, nostri- a nostrium of some sort. I don't 
or you know no, what? It's, a it, it's got a squash. It's got a. It's some sort of a squash yeah. family. Now that it I is a loofah. Loofah. You got. You're making loofah. I've been wanting. We you got. Gotta send me some we loofah. Got, spice. You gotta send me some. We loofah got loofah, spice. bro. I would love wash it. Hmm? I can wash it and send it. Same yeah. your postal address. I'll, I will for sure. It's it's what the, some seeds are a little bit hard to get out here, and I've been really because that's the plant. It grows out. You get the squash, and you process it, and you get the loofah sponge out of it. Correct. That's correct. I, Chop I it mean, up like how, a cucumber slices. Yeah, Dehydrate cool it and thing? use a skeleton. Use it skeleton to scrub your body. That's right. It's so cool. Have you done that? Do you have loofah sponge that you're using, or is this your first round with it? This is our first process? season. Yeah, this is our first season cultivating it. We actually um, won the plants. So we were gifted three plants from the Institute of Technology, hoping that some will go to seed, that we can collect the seeds and we can pass the seeds off. Otherwise, uh, we will uh, be attempting to get seeds from. Yeah. So this here is our cannabis breeding, uh, Kemp cannabis breeding uh, facility, where we are cultivating a European strain Compulti, which is a seed bearing fiber strain. So, some of the fiber strains obviously are whole fiber, and then some of the seed bearing strains are cold fire. So, well, are, are the seed bearings hermaphroditic tendon plants? Set, or? Y yes, so they mixed up a Compulti with the pheromone strain. So a uh, breeder five years back had both genetics in his same, <clears throat> same, same garden. Mm -hmm. um, Cross-pollination because I believe pheromone is diocetious and compulti has been bred to be monocetious. So sadly, part of my job is searching around, looking inside these... Oh, sunshine, bad angle. Um, look at all the juice. Look I love dews. Beautiful dues. morning dew kissing off of those. Do you love dews? Oh. I yeah, love dews. This is mountain it, dew, bro. Look at this that is the freshest, it. freshest mountain dew. Mm hmm. On my finger. That's mountain that's dew. A nice cool mm -hmm. drink in the morning. That that's for sure. Oh yeah. But I won't take so too what, much what of the dew of my plant. Mm -hmm. if, if I may ask, what point? Like like they, they look to me. I would probably say. Well, like, around day 30 ish of flower but it's it's no there's there, there, there's some that no. are differentiating 90 90 90 it's of life. all planted at the same time in october 90, 90 right? of life or like when did they start 90 of life that? 90 of life 90 of life so they probably yeah, when like did they a, start transitioning into the flower period because they're photo period right or are they auto flowers well, the photo period, but most gardeners may be aware that we've got a thing called climate change. There might be some form of magnetic lava flow flipping our entire gravitational pull upside down and round in circles, but that's also allegedly. I'm not a scientist, but this one here was planted at the same time, and you'll see that these budlets are only, you know, two, two or three weeks in. And then the, her bigger brother, her bigger sister, rather, is way up there at already 10 foot tall. You know what I mean? Beautiful. So we've got this beautiful skunky already coming out with pink. Come on now. Already coming out with her pinks. And she's swelling up. But yes, my inspection job is to look on the tops of the heads for male flowers, along the side for male flowers. Occasionally, we do have the classic male flower obviously popping out where they should pop out. Yeah. But... Being a monocetious, diocetious, if I'm saying those words correctly, cross, we've got all sorts of shapes and sizes and terpenes and cannabinoid profiles. Um, a bit of shadow. Yep, that's better. So these all come from the same seed jar, being pheromone, compulti cross, diocetious, monocetious cross. Yeah, definitely. Uh, a lot of variety in the height, yeah. Lot of we've even found a... Uh, an old school uh, Dr. Greenspoon plant that's only like two, two feet tall and got nothing on it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, look at you. <laughs> look at you, that's little neat. thing. What are you up to? Yeah. Those are always so, fun but, to play with because you get some really unique variability into, into those. Like I kind of, I, I like it when there's a lot to explore. Like it's great when you have a oh, really consistent inbred line and that's what you're looking for and you're able to find something there. But part of the, oh, look at that. 
part of the fun for me yeah. is the hunt. Like, look at like, me the too. uniqueness in every plant. I mean, not every plant's going to be I'm, keepable, but I mean, I want to explore them, right? I'm I'm living your dream, London, and you're living my dream. So <laughs> let's just keep this up. You know what I mean? <laughs> wow, that's right. Everybody wants. Pistols. Yeah, that's magenta. Ah, but look who else. I don't know if you can see. Look who else is on this pistol. Can you see that little guy? Not quite. It's not quite focused. Maybe uh, back it up a little bit because I don't see right there. Yeah, it'll, it'll hone out. Oh, I see a caterpillar. I do too. And he's gone. Jobless, one love. I'm a Buddhist most of the time. You know what I mean? So there was an interesting thing. So I was watching about kind of like no-till regenerative practices. So the, the, the fellow, I, I think it's the Livy Web Farms. I forget exactly what his name is. But he was talking about there's this bird, the sparrow that lives in fa that lives in farmhouses that is typically considered a pest. Well, one one year he had his farm and there was a bunch of caterpillars that came in, and he's like, "Well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go spray anything. I'm trying to do this regenerativeness." And what he saw was this large portion of, of sparrow bird came out and ate all the caterpillars. Like they they just yeah, buddy. and it was like a train going back and forth. But if you remove the caterpillars that bird would start finding a new food source and whether or not they would continue back to that caterpillar would take some time, some effort for them to maybe find again if they have to find a different food source. So I find it very interesting. Like sometimes like, do I get rid of it? How, what, 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 how do I decide what to get rid of? Sometimes I find it very challenging. So then I'm like, do I do it? What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> this is beautiful, mate. Yeah. So having, like you say, having, I'll just, so, so we'll, as, uh, mate, mate, you're talking Australian. So down here for bro science, bro science is a positive because that's how we talk to each other. You London are my bro, obviously short for brother. And then down here and we got under, so I can't reach this and I'm six foot tall. So that's, you know, that's our three meters in the sky. And then right next to her, we have what is known, if you're old school, Dr. Grinspoon, this looking thing here that's just weird. A few branches, a few a few nugs on it, mainly like single leaf nose. stems. Yeah, you know, there's not. I can't smell too many. You know, it smells like dirt. If you get <laughs> but, that, if you rub that, that stem, do you get a do you get like a finger aroma on nah, that when you can't get, that get any? Dirt? Nah. Really? No. Nah. So some of them are like straight uh, hempy hemp's and like you know. So sadly, working here with <clears throat> the alleged illicit gardeners, all of it just hemp's to them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas more coming from the science and pheno strain selecting. So I come from an orcharding background. My cousins are well 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 to do apple orchard exporters and i've always said to them you've made apple money i'm gonna make gunja money so i'm following in my you know i was also obviously the black sheep in the family being the cannabis consuming monkey child um, i'm like the yeah, outlier. yeah yeah you were the, you the were outlier the, you that's the right outlier. you were the weird little plant were you <laughs> that's right my friend oh and as i say here on the tip of this bad girl, she's got what looks like a flower pods appearing. I don't know if you can quite see that. Zoom in, zoom out. Come on, camera. Maybe you can, maybe you can't, but that that plant is now tagged for destruction. The dun, light's dun, dun, dun. a little bit. Could you, could you try the other side of the bud for me? Just because I think the light's making it was the problem there. Now it's frozen. Well, there you go. Yeah, I can see that a little bit. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, just forming yeah, right so the on the tippy top there, eh? Yep. That's right. Yep. And so some of them will have it on the one main cola on the tippy top. Some of them will have it on that one and all of the six tops around it. Yeah? Okay. Which I found in, in this one. I found a plant that looks like um, the holy, uh, uh, what is the name of the Jewish candle? Um. Mm, I know, I know that. Uh, yeah. 
Whatever that name is. I sent you that if photo there's, on there's, your there's email. There's 81 people watching right now. So someone in, in the One chat, of them will know. What's the, what's the, what's the, I don't want to like butcher or say it wrong either, but like, what's, if you could pop that in the chat, I'd be really appreciative of it. Um, cow, chicken, horse. So here, <laughs> so here we grow uh, kale and sweet corn. Nice. What, we do also... you know what breed of kale that you have there? Wonderful job on that, by the way. It no. Looks like it's being so we... Care of. Yeah, and, well, we harvest it weekly. So we yeah. own, we run a marakai garden. And so marakai, kai is the Maori word for food. And mara is like marakai from the earth. So earth food. And then we've got kai moana, which is kai from the ocean. Um, here's my... Uh, um, yeah, Hawaii is the same old sent us a picture of the candle. It doesn't give us the name. There you go. Okay, thank you, Hawaii. We appreciate that. That one. Thank you, Hawaii. Like that. That's actually yeah. a really fun shape because like, a lot of people breed for that kind of structure because it, it allows for that that kind of automatic uh, topping almost look. You know, like the plant just catches up on those lower leaves so much faster. Oh, what the heck? Somebody party too hard last night? That's our scarecrow. He's on lay laybacks. <laughs> He's not doing. He's not doing the best job. <laughs> who but, yeah, so this is my. Who are you partying with this... last night? And why? Why are they still? He was on the, the tips. Garden? Like what yeah, are he they? He was on the tips. What type of plants you got in there? So I've that. got nasturtiums. I've got marigolds. This one here is my beans. So this is beans for breakfast. You know what I'm saying? Nice. So this. Are, do you like so to bring living them all... all the way, or do you pick them? I pick them when they're little. Like this one yeah. here is probably a little bit too too big and a little bit too fibery. So whereas the slightly skinnier ones, the slightly those, skinnier ones are so juicy. Those straight are like in my pole mouth. Bean, pole beans, so they keep going. Like you keep them picked or are they bush yep. beans? They only do like two rounds. No, they are uh, uh, run, uh, runner beans. So I okay. should have them on a trellis. But last year my trellis was no so trellis big. Nature. My trellis was so big. Well, I'm actually doing the three sisters gardening technique of running my cannabis up my corn on my other, I mean, cannabis up my corn, my beans up my corn with uh, squash or pumpkins underneath on our other field. But over here, my beans took down this beautiful plant. She was <laughs> big, but not big enough. So she was standing up, but now she's a, I like yeah. that. Hey, and underneath this bean plant, you can find the cannabis. <laughs> you can't even <laughs> see the right. poor thing anymore. That's hilarious. Yeah. I'm That's sorry. So I'm sorry. Uh, but I'm going to be direct sowing. Cool. I'm going to be direct sowing some cuttings into this bed to see if we can get some uh, variation of compounds from something that was planted in this bed. Uh -uh. To something wow, that, that was looks, planted in that this looks like That looks really dead. Capsicini, yeah. Capsicini <laughs> yeah, with some weeds. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So this was a student's bed. So yeah. we did have cannabis in this bed, this bed, that bed, that bed, and that bed. That bed, that bed, that bed, and that bed. But sadly, due to the COVID restrictions, vaccination unvaccinated students were not allowed on a revolutionary cannabis field. Yeah. Mm, mm. Yeah. Yeah. Red tape. Yeah. Red tape. So our, our, our teacher, uh, our teachers and all of the students were pro choice unvaxxed and the uh, people that write the rules said, well, if you're not vaxxed, you can't participate in education. And we're like, oh, that sounds legal. Great. Listen, um, it's fine. So we, we called their bluff. They called our bluff. And then they canceled the the grow. So sadly, my boss had to make my, uh, the hard decision of pulling out the cannabis plants from this bed. And that's why it looks like it's been tilled over. Because each student um, gets the bed given to them. They put their amendments in it. Most of them are you know old school cannabis farmers who believe that you want to dig it deep big hole and bury some kinna frames, some fish heads, put heaps of sheep shits and cow manures all in the hole, you know, stir it all up and then plant your little plant on top of it. And as you can see, we've got, we've got some pretty big plants. So, you know, yeah. although that is a heavily tilled bed, um, it has got some good amendments in it. 
So yeah, I mean the, the tilling, <laughs> it, it's it's you, there's multiple ways to go about it. I, I would probably say the no till, like the, the it, depending on your personality type, that yeah. kind of no till like generative. I like that's I me. Like that's me all over, yeah. right? But yeah, well. it, it's also a lot more technical to get out what you want out of it. You need to learn your garden yes. and how it works and how your plants work for your garden. Where in the other method, you can have a lot Cause... more consistent high, uh, high rate of success and get your outcome out of it a little bit easier. Where this takes a little bit of time. I see some yarrow in there, do I believe? Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And in the Reader's Digest magazine, uh, Plants of Magic... Um, you'll see that they explain that yarrow has an interconnecting uh, pathway, root pathway, and helps other medicinal plants become more medicinal, quote unquote, Reader's Digest. So that's why she's in there. Here's my uh, beans growing up my cannabis sock flag. <laughs> Here's uh, my, my personal favorite, a girl called Trinity. So Trinity actually... Trinity actually came up with uh, every set of branches. There's three branches, not two. Okay. That's, the that's why she's called. That's why she's called Trinity. Yep. So if you see here down right from this, right from the start, branches on the bottom. One, two, three. And it's two, got that three. very vertical structure too, eh? You it let does. That grow natural, it is a, didn't you? Yep. That's just, yep. That's a hemp plant. But sadly, like we were mentioning before about the photo period, we yeah. put all of these plants in at the same time lots of them went straight to flower at one foot tall. Yeah. Okay. So we've had to dose them heavy nitrogen to try to like tell them that that's not what they should be doing. And some of them obviously have taken that nitrogen and ran to the roof with it. Um, oh yeah, We've definitely gone for to it. the roof, man, to well, the roof. There's a lot of ver variability in there, you can tell. So it's like it's not really a surprise that you're going to have a, have a lot. It's about choosing and selecting at this point, right? Get as much in, in the right. dirt as you can, and find those things that work for the you. The outliers, like yeah, yeah. As my yeah. uncle doesn't like, you know, the outliers, the unpredictables. Yes, but the wee little this ones. One, the wee little ones. <laughs> This one here is actually a volunteer hemp plant. So I haven't planted that. She came up by herself because this was my hemp. This was my hemp field, my student, when I was a student last year, this was my bed. And as the volunteer, I've come back and reclaimed my bed and kept it, kept it, keeping it. Uh, this cannabis plant lasted the entire winter. Oh, so wow. that is actually a two, a two year old cannabis plant. She's uh, slowly dying and decaying. But as we know about that, I believe this one here might be feeding a little bit of juice to this one through the roots just to keep her elder alive, out of respect. Yeah. <laughs> and out of respect, I'm letting her slowly die and letting her pass off her historical knowledge to this one. And you'll see that the branches on this one, if you can see, are pretty tightly compact. Even though she's got all the space in the world, That's she's relatively... She's okay. relatively looking just like a, a hemp plant with not many branches and not much uh, uh, structure to her because all of the plants that I planted in mine, I planted them two inches apart like an actual hemp field and then just had like this giant... I'm live right now. Giant... Oh, I'm live right now. Sorry, my wife was my wife was getting at me a little bit there with the little one in the background. I don't know if y'all saw her. And I just went to pull out my my plug for my phone. And it's like melted and totally like Oh. Yeah, like it blew. Don't start forest fires. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh my god, this is the scariest thing that's you, ever happened to me. So now I'm like, You got fire? Yeah. You got fire alarms and Oh yeah, beep, I've beep, got beep, all beep, sorts of stuff. Good. I, I have CO2 good man. monitors too. There's a as you can see, now we're a fancy. small heater behind me if if you can. Um, I'm in Canada and it's the middle of winter. Um, eh? So you're in Canada, <laughs> eh? Yeah, I'm in Canada eh? and it's the middle of winter. Um, so it doesn't get very warm here. And we'll take a little tour oh. of my my garden at one point. I, I, I'm digging yeah. yours, so we're, we're going to do that so for a little bit. So we've got some uh, amend amendments going on here. Ooh, slimy, comfy juice. Ooh. Cool. 
Cool. Um, we've got so some. So you're doing fermented some, plant extract. We we are trying to do fermented plant extract. Yes. Um, this here is two bags of males, all wrapped up tightly so their pollen can't escape. I'm just like heat, heat treating them for a while before this bucket becomes usable, and then I'll throw them in there. Hopefully, the breakdowns of the uh, thingy me what's it's on side aren't too Do too broken down by the time like I get once them. A day or... Yes. Yeah. Yes. We got no bubblers because we live off grid, so everything's like uh, dead. Uh, well, <laughs> well, not dead. Well, I, we've been exploring the whole fermentation and, and that process at my home now. With with like, I'm making uh, mango vinegar and a few other things, and it, it's quite the area to explore. And I, a simple stir does a world of wonder. Um, you know, we're, like I make my own labs here now, which is really cool. And, nice. and actually, my plants have really responded well to it um and uh, i feel com confident being able to say that because i have been working my plants for you know a, a, a year more or more some of these genetics so i, I nice. i've seen them change is like okay yeah that's definitely making a positive london should a i do have one coming up here london should ask how much a liter of petrol cost in new zealand uh, and we can <laughs> yes. all sigh in relief that we don't have to pay that. How much does it cost for a liter of petrol out there? Two dollars fifty-five per liter. Holy! F um, yeah. Yes. Not only not only do we not have good seed, <laughs> a gallon. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're in metric system. Well, we're in metrics here in Canada, so it's a dollar seventy-five yeah. a, a liter right now, and it's yeah. like holy crap. Not only can we not get. Uh, uh, outstanding stabilized genetics we can also not get gasoline um, but hey you know so if you see from the top here we've still got some nice cloud cover along those ranges there somewhere awesome that yeah. is looking beautiful the sun so, is rising yeah so my my job um is to protect the local uh, legacy farmers who may or may not allegedly be farming in a 10k radius <laughs> so out of respect, we must eliminate our males instantly and cull the hermaphrodites, or at least, uh, you know, splice them. We do have a friend that's doing uh, tissue culture, so we do have the option if there are some monocetous hermaphrodites with high terps that we want to keep, we can tissue culture that's off to somebody else and get it away from our flowers because not nobody driving likes it seeded. out there though you'll ha you'll mail that no right? we'll that mail cost, that yeah we're licensed drive anything, anything yeah <laughs> <laughs> no we're, we're 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 licensed and above board and yeah we're you know the future is with uh growing all your cuts in tubes now instead of growing your cuts in cloning bins we grow them in test tubes so if that's the future we better catch up to the future and get onto that asap so we've got a friend down in the south island of new zealand who is working on that type of thing so. i've been wanting to find that in canada but there's so many they make so many loop when you when all of a sudden cannabis is legal there's more loopholes uh, there, oh. there's more mm -hmm. there's not more loopholes there's more problems and issues so it's like it's yes. some some of the weirdness like i can grow four plants and my neighbor can grow four plants but i can't give him my plants and he can't give me his plants and i can't give him my weed and he can't give me my weed oh man but it's like there's like it's just there's so many weirdnesses that that go on it's 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 the legalization if not done correctly, mm -hmm. is, is a lot is a lot of work and and can create more problems than necessary. So what we're trying to do is not legalize it, right? What we're trying to do is free it. <laughs> it but, I, hey. I love it. We're gonna legalize a plant. Uh, yeah. You, yeah. Uh, how how right. did how did war against it go? Because that didn't go very well. Let's see if you can control it through legalization. Let's see how that happens. <laughs> yes oh, oh so you had some rules that we were already breaking and now you're going to give us a whole lot more rules hmm all right and we farmers don't like technology and or rules other than the sun comes up at the certain time the clouds are coming over which brings rain and you know logical things not illogical things like one grown man can't share his harvest with another grown man who lives next door to him. That is just 
I know. I, fried Piper, I'm sorry. I know. It, it's it's first world problems. I know you're not talking <laughs> at all. They're like, you know, as we walk, as you walk through this gor- glorious hemp farm, you're like, oh yeah, well, I guess, you know, we're complaining about not much nothing. Um, I do have a question and maybe you'll know, yes. I'm assuming this is a, a New Zealander. Um, and, and, you know, you, there's not a lot, huge population down there, so you probably all know each other. But uh, FCP02, <laughs> can you ask him if he knows Medi Cropper? Because um, I know, actually, cannabis communities can be oddly small, too. So sometimes we know each other. Does uh, that name sound familiar? Bing, that that tash, hashtag name pseudonym does not sound uh, common to my ears. But, yes, you are right there, uh, Notorious London. Um w- we do faction ourselves off to small families that we can trust, you know, being a legacy farmer who's been, you know, called paranoid on many a, many a occasion for not bringing my cell phones to conversations. Like, you know, uh, I don't have my phone with me because why would I want the government to track my phone to your location where you're running a tinny shop selling drugs, you idiot. Okay. <laughs> Bro, it's trying to call you. I left my phone at home, bro. Yeah, well, bro. I'm like, bro, you know that about me. My phone doesn't come with me on these secret, alleged secret missions. All right? I don't know if you know much about... Most of my friends won't even answer answer a phone call. You have to text them first, and then they'll decide to call you an hour later if they feel like it. Off the burner phone. Just in case you say something illegal. (laughs) So anyway... Allegedly, I will accept any seeds from anybody. I will uh, obviously uh, not request them, but I accept donations. As a politician, I have my legal political right uh, of freedom of, uh, you know, right of association, right to my culture under the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights. We have these rights, and these are the rights that I bring to my own person and the persons around me in my general protective area. So, although it is still illegal to ship cannabis seeds via the mail, it would be much appreciated worldwide, listeners, because as you can see, the genetics we've got, uh, well, we're growing them like kings because that's what we do, but we're only playing with hemp as our legacy farmers and other friends who visit come to visit my, which I'm so proud of, different, uh, different plants. They say silly things like, ah, it's just hemp where's the real stuff i'm like bro this is the real stuff i don't know if you know much about cannabis but cannabis is the real stuff this well, is I, all I, real. I always thought it's funny i mean if you look at we, we have dr anna schwabe and she's actually on the dank hour tonight shout out to that and i have to study some epigenetics today i have like four papers nice. i gotta read through and write a thing up oh, on damn. epigenetics um for the show tonight they they's a great, great reminder but but we were we were talking about like kind of this we, we they do like a weekly uh paper uh white like a scientific paper review or read 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 book club sorry i'm yes. stumbling over my words right now um and there in her paper that she actually wrote, wrote that is peer reviewed does all the whole process and everything um, it speaks about cannabis and hemp and, and, and the level of separation um, of, of like divergence for them to be considered separate species and what is commonly thought of in, in, in scientific terms as a separate species. You wouldn't separate hemp and cannabis while, while they do have slightly different deviations at this point. They're not like far enough apart to be considered as separate um species which is i i find very interesting so that's more of like a political term in my opinion um that was created so my dad shot me a message the other day and my, my stepdad's actually a cop and um he, he nice he, my, yeah my lovely guy yeah lovely <laughs> guy uh amazing person and actually like d- did a lot of good like would clean my like, like would come up and grab laundry from my room and like leave the pot on 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 the counter like wouldn't do anything about like he didn't like my mom would get mad at him because I just go buy more. But regardless, <laughs> regardless, it's like a good guy. So he, he sends me articles now and again about like cannabis and hemp, and he he finds the science very interesting. And one of the he, he sent me the the new information on the the new article about the the CBD um, and the receptors for for uh, COVID protection or whatever. 
Um, and I thought it was like, I, I responded and told them this, you know, like, hey, they're not really that far apart. Like, here's some papers and stuff like that for you to, to dig in and think about because they're not. Like, he goes, his words were, it's not cannabis. I know it's not cannabis, it's hemp. Um, but, and my response was, well, I don't think you can make that differentiation. And, and to here's that, another paper. <laughs> yeah, here's another paper. And, and I think that's the interesting thing, too, is where are we, where are we looking at and what do we decide in the future is kind of how, how things go forward. So what do you build in there? That's my, so this is one of my friend Kyle's. He currently live in tent life, like myself, volunteer. And I'm volunteering uh, my tradesman's skills to build him a little 2.4, 2.4, two windows, one door hut. He's going to live down here. I've already helped uh, participate in building this hut on the hill. Uh, so fully insulated, fully lined, uh, linseed oil, uh, 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 wood grain, beautiful. Um, here's some more of the gardens. So we've got more gardens tucked away there. I'll take you through to our food garden quickly. Um, you might just, so here's our, our shed. We've currently just got our first solar panel um, four months ago. So that's why I feel confident walking around using up all my uh, battery life on my phone, knowing that I can charge it from the sun. Because <laughs> normally it would be a short drive to town to visit some of the village people who have electricity in their village people houses. Um, so. <laughs> Can I just come around for three hours and uh, we'll have a coffee and a chat and I'll charge my cell phone? Yeah. Yeah. And if you come over smelling like that field, you can come over to my house oh, anytime yeah. you want, brother. So we do, we, do have, we do have the Green Dollar Exchange down here. So some of the locals are alleged legacy farmers and some of them just hunt venison and grow food and search the oceans for food. So we do have a strong Green Dollar trade here. So here's my little canna car currently rolling on dubs. We've got my flat tire there at the back. Um, so all, all pumped out. Awesome. Got the com Get pulled comfy over logo with on that. the front. No, sir. <laughs> No, They're gonna have, you, you know me, I'm going to be yarning to them for two hours. You know, oh, what, do you want to talk about cannabis don't medicine? Am I intoxicated? That. Yeah, don't pull do over not. that outlier. Don't pull over yeah. that one. You'll, you'll be stuck talking to them for an hour and... Not know so I've had some, by the end of it. some beautiful leaves airbrushed on onto my car. So we've got nice. some nice purple, nice purple phenos, some blue phenos, um, you know. So we've got some uh, stickers here. I was lucky enough to visit uh, the lovely islands of uh, Maui. And we've got some uh, Rastafarian Maui islands in a 420 all day Maui. Shout out to my brother from Maui who uh, commented before earlier about yeah. the uh, picture of the... Uh, Cannabis, uh, Jewish cannabis plant. Uh, what I was saying about that before was quite possibly that uh, the burning candle, before we had wax and candles, there's a good chance that somebody just flipped up upside down one of those gunja plants and on the first day lit the, the head bud and every other day and every other day for the nine days that they light the candle, they just lit the other candles, which are the buds around the candle which is just a dried cannabis plant much like sage sticks and blessings on that type of spiritual my, my parallels to that when i saw the plant i'm like this is the jewish candle that they used to light on fire every season for sacredness and it makes perfect sense to me here's our uh, garden so we have a somewhat market garden going on here and like I said, we're having to add things to it because, as you see, this is what the earth looked like. We live on a dry riverbed. Mm -hmm. I have been um, speaking with uh, Lady Morrison, the uh, the uh, so soil guy, about ah, how lucky menorah. I am. The menorah yeah. is Galero. The menorah. Thank That's you. We word. appreciate you, Chris. You're awesome. Thank you for that one. What's that growing Thanks, in the middle aisle there? Is it, it looks uh, funky or is it... Fancy lettuce? Oh, fancy Fluffy. lettuce. So it's like a um, fancy. A yes. I don't know the name. We call it fancy because it's all curly whirly, right? It's fancy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we build these beautiful gates uh, and fences to keep the stock out because we live on a riverbed. Some of the local neighbors um, do uh, run their stock 
uh, up and down the aisles, uh, up the river, and I have had uh, an early morning wake up by <laughs> with a cow at my tent door, which is not so cool. <laughs> so, so you rows have, and rows you, of you tomatoes. Have, you have some cattle on the property too? The, no, they're not our cattle. They oh. roam up from the riverbed. <laughs> oh, sorry. So we live on a... We live on a riverbed, so if you yeah. can see, like this, this was the soil that we plant in, right? Yeah, yeah it's just mineral enriched rocks. It's rocks. Yeah. It's riverbed rocks. So we get in compost amendments and manure amendments just to get some some life back into it. We're trying our hardest to provide food for our local community. To we're changing the idea. Look at the. So we have a lot of. UV, B, we have a hole in our ozone layer. Mm -hmm. So we get some amazing colors pop out. We get some amazing stress. Obviously, we've got multiple stress because we're trying to grow in rocks um, yeah, simultaneously. That is, that is an interesting looking, like even how you've built the, the I, I have found to do that with that type of dryness in the soil. Yeah. It's, it's, and it's, so, it's a challenge. It's getting that organic life back in there takes a little bit of time and, and takes it does. a lot of work. Yeah. This is only the first year for this garden. The other garden over the other side is two years old. And then this garden here, we haven't yet. Well, we've turned it over twice, loosened it up a bit, but we haven't got enough finances to put more of the amendments back into it yeah. to create some life. But the compost that we use is heavily microbial enriched. So they do come with lots of fungi. And so we've got, you know, this is good. We don't have enough of it, obviously, but it's a start to keep, you know, the does plants alive, as you can without, see. Does it overtake without much amending, or is it, like, just too it hard? It does. No, it does. So I've been placing clover all around my gardens yeah. for nitrogen fixing and just being a great ground cover. But yeah, literally. Because that's always rocks. a great cheap, cheaper option if you have an excess seed. It's just, I just throw down like a, a blend of clover uh, and, and maybe ryegrass and you just like, just kill it and cut it and leave it. To, to compost even if you don't because you're right like if you're buying tons of compost and and, and amendments like that it, it can cost a lot of money but like i always mm -hmm. find it's it's best to keep the land moving than not that's just yes. my opinion but totally you can see in our um soil bin that we're all out of amendments right now we've oh. got a <laughs> <laughs> all used up all gone um compost oh, you're coming, into, just take, you're yeah. coming into fall now aren't you Yes, yes, autumn. We like to call it autumn because we speak English, eh? <laughs> we don't speak American, bro. I was in America. No offense to the Americans. I was in American, and when I explained to them that I also spoke English like them, they quickly corrected me and told me that they did not speak English. They spoke American. And I said, well, I guess from all the television shows I've watched, I also speak American, uh, just with a Kiwi accent. And they laughed. And then I explained to them that we had the dollar down here in, in New Zealand. And they were like, oh, great to see the dollars like looking after you. And I said, no, no, it's the Queen's dollar. We have Kiwi New Zealand money. It's got a picture of our Queen from England on it. It's not your American dollar. They're like, oh, that's confusing. I'm like, it's okay, bro. I don't know the name of the states and capitals of the states in America. So it's not that you don't know much about my country. It's just that why would you need to know much about my country? Come on, let's be honest. So here's this little... Here's this little stream that in winter, in winter, it's full of water. Yes. We pump, we pump the water to our top tank from this here uh, river entrapment, which will dry up. And this time last year had dried up. Okay. So you've, so, you've had a little bit better weather. Well, if you, yeah, you catch, um, you're catching the rain, right? As much as you can. We catch the rain as much as we can, and then we put our siphoning tank here with our compressor unit there, and go 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 for ten hours, yeah. and then that fills our tanks back up. Ah, so there's my natural swimming watering hole. That's where I bathe. Oh yeah, running water. Do you have running water at your house? I have running water as well. Look at that. It's not it's not running so fast, and I don't know if you know much about like the algal bloom situation, but we've got yeah. some serious amount. Serious amount of slime going on in our, and the slime, the slime has got some funky ass green and blue mold on it where it's dehydrating and like 
getting eaten by the ear bacteria. Oh, but yeah. Cool. That, that you, slime. You gotta get a micro camera. We get a zoom in on that. That'd be so cool. I know, but yeah. So there's um some things going on. Last winter, the water on this riverbed was all the way up to the top of the bridge, almost going onto the road. So this was three meters deep, and it's like you know twenty wow. or so meters wide. So when it rains, it rains because we're in the mountain ranges or on the side of the mountain ranges we're uh yeah we're lucky enough to have lots of this i don't know if you can see what those lines are yeah quartz quartz crystals Very interesting. yeah and here's all our smashed rocks i showed shango los from uh, shaping fire bit of a plug legion um <laughs> he, he got told he got told by uh Leighton to grab all the different rocks he can and then smash them with a hammer. So he attempted to do that and then found out how many rocks he had to smash with a hammer and gave up. I sent him yeah, some photos it's... of, I sent him some photos of my crumbly rocks and I say, Shango, if you need any rocks to smash, bruv, come to New Zealand and I can literally pick them apart with my fingers. <laughs> and he goes, go. ah, easy smashing rocks. Ah. Easy smashing rocks with my god finger. Whoop, whoop. So, yeah, that's a little bit of a tour around our greater property. And, uh, yeah. Any more technical questions about love, life, and uh, universal harmony? No, man. Preach. I mean, yeah. I think you're, you're so, living the life, brother. I mean, there, there's a lot of natural life around you that you're, you're having to, to grow in there. Do you see a lot of, like, do you, are you using any, like, local plants is there we i mean we talked about comfrey and some of these other things is there any regional plants that you want to like chat about that you would like to like to show off a little bit before we start to bring it to a close no no we don't really have um we i guess we're growing the local kumara which is the sweet potatoes so we grow kumara lots of kumara because they're sustainable um, trying to look at doing permaculture with the kumara beds um, as a biodiverse uh, food um, replacement for the starch compounds i read an article or was listening to a tuber about um, growing in in a permaculture garden um, potatoes or kumara and as the roots grow up or the plant grows up it covers as a ground cover and yeah. then if you leave the potatoes in the ground they decompose and then feed the earth again. So it's a win, win, win. And then explode yeah. again the next spring into another mass That's one. <laughs> of potato. The one, yeah, the ones, really that the ones that don't the ones that don't rot will rebounce and the ones that rot will feed you cannabis and all the other biodiversity of all the people that want to eat rotting root vegetables. So <laughs> I am personally giving that a try over on our other garden. So I live here, here's my tent, um, I live here, we've got three other um, plots that we work on, as well as we are the first legacy farmers in the country to be contracted to one of the big uh, pharmaceutical medicinal license holders, here's my tent, here's my, uh, here's my, my crystals still out from full moon, I like to uh, char charge them up under the moonlight. So we've had a beautiful full moon over the last couple of days. I'll be taking them back inside soon. Um, Does Aminus yes, ask, uh, uh, do you ha I don't know how, maybe you can see it on the screen here. Uh, I don't want to say this. Fijoas. 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 Yes. So it, it sounds Fijoas. exactly like it's written. Fijoas. Yes. Fijoas. <laughs> yes, we do have Fijoas. Um, they're not currently in season, um, but yes. Um, there is Fijoa bushes uh, at my neighbor's property. What what is my, that like? Is it a is it a root? Is it it's a, a bald kiwi fruit. Oh, cool. Yeah, would be kind of like what it is a Fijoa. You can eat the skin if you want to. It's a little bit tart and uh, that type of thing. But here's part of our native plant nursery. We've got some uh, native redwoods. I don't know if you know much about sequoia trees. Native redwood trees. Here's some little baby ones. Oh, very cool. A propagated, yeah. like they're all from, from, uh, yes. uh, from cut. Uh, they're, no, they're all from seeds. Oh, cool. Yeah. 
So we're going to plant a, a bank of them along there and hopefully the uh, owner of the property in 20 to 50 years can harvest some giant redwood trees. <laughs> Very odd. I freaking, what? I freaking love kiwi, says Fried Piper. Anything that's Kiwis? To, I love fruit. Yeah. I love unique fruits and stuff like that. It's so hard to get. Oh, me too. Yeah. It's not a great uh, we had a, season. We had an Argentinian student come in and I introduced her to Fajoas and she was amazed. Um, it's a delectable thing to see. Um, my friend, my brother's moved to Australia. Is the, uh, the second outhouse that I've been building with the water trapment that hasn't quite yet been finished. But it's summer, so I was like, there's no urgency to fulfill the water trapments. Like, we can yeah. fill that up with the hose and bucket in 10 minutes. <laughs> um, currently, uh, mirror ball. Because <laughs> who doesn't want a mirror ball hanging off their toilet? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ace, Ace um, Boggy asks, what cultivar have you found particularly help, helpful for dealing with the nerve pain due to the back problem? Oh, okay. Um, I was, so actually I was, I've got back problems. I just recently had a disc removed. Um, I went to an osteopath to alleviate my L4, L5 herniated disc. And they accidentally pinched the nerve on my L5 S1, which caused numbness in my genital areas, which was um, then I needed emergency surgery after having that MRI x-ray. Anyway, long short story. Uh, the medications that I was given in the hospital, obviously pharmaceutical medicines. And although I speak the truth about my cannabis medicines, when you're in their house, it's best to be as quiet as a mouse about your preferred medicines and not be disruptive to their system, telling them, I don't want your narcotics. Don't give me those opioids. So I took the drugs that they fed me. I took the surgery that they gave me. Thank you very much to the free medical health care system in New Zealand. I didn't come out with a $20,000 spinal disc removal bill. And I also didn't collect the drugs that they said that I would be required to take for all the pain that I'd be in. I rung my local naturopath, um, and she gave me two uh, RSO, uh, full spectrum, uh, FSO, sorry, full spectrum oils. Um, one was Charlotte's Web, and the other one was White Rhino. And I took those as a sublingual under my tongue, and I suffered from absolutely no nerve pain whatsoever from my surgery. I was straight out of hospital, standing up, walking. The doctors were like, Oh, you, you seem all right. When I went in for my one-month checkup or six-week checkup, I walked in there like a champ. And they were like, oh, you seem to be walking fine. How's your pain levels? I'm like, haven't felt any pain since the day I left. It was like, oh, good to see that the uh, medication's working for you. And I said, oh, well, it's not your medication, my friend. <laughs> Let me show you the bottles because it says on the bottom, when you come in to visit the doctor, please bring your prescribed medicines with you and for discussion. So I brought in yeah. my two bottles. One was a white rhino FSO, and the other one was a Charlotte's Web FSO. He looked at them and said, ah, these are cannabinoid medicines. He goes, ah, okay, and you felt no pain. I said, zero pain. And he's like, ah, well, I'll write that down. And then we carried on with the conversation, and he kind of like ignored the fact that his pharmaceutical drugs weren't actually used. I had no pain, and I was using cannabis. So white rhino for sleeping. So I took my white rhino tincture for my one o'clock afternoon rest because obviously after spinal injury, you don't want to be standing up and walking around and even being alive most of the time because um, you're very vulnerable, still can't move. Being out of pain and not being able to move is two different things. So sleeping time, white rhino at one o'clock for my afternoon siesta. Um, white, ry uh, white rhino was also taken at night time at my nine o'clock and within... You know, within 10 minutes, 10 minutes of taking white rhino, oh my goodness, 10 minutes of taking white rhino tinctures, oh sorry about that, London, I'm oh, extraordinarily tired, um, and then fast asleep, I mean you can push yeah. past it if you want to, if you need to stay awake, you can yawn those yawns off, stay focused, stay awake, but go with the yawns, you're knocked out in 20 minutes, and the Charlotte's Web FSO, um, taking every three hours like you do with all prescription medicines, um, no pain and full, you know, I was able to speak like a normal person without drooling on opioids. And yeah. so I was still functioning and like, 
you know, and I'm not addicted to crack or uh, opioids or heroin or opium. It's, or... It's, the, it's the coming back from those things. I mean, cause when we, we just purify things like that. Look at that beautiful. Animal. I know. So this animal here, his name's Tank. He's our garden maintenance man and also mineral uh, nutritional supply. Hi, Tank. Do a wave. You're on live broadcast. We've got like 80 people looking at you right now, bro. Oh, back to work. He's sorry. He's working. Like, keeping busy. So yeah, he produces. He produces our un. Um, uh, what is it like? Normal people stab horses with vaccines and things to protect them. He's one of the pro choices. So this is va uh, unvaxed tank. So you can swear that the nutrients coming out the other end is all like non-pharmaceutical grade horse manure. Thanks, tank. Doing a great job. As well as it keeps the noise down for the weed whackers. Normally we have the weed whackers out here just. Taking everything but when we can out, put, yeah. yeah. But when we can put in a fence, we'll turn that top cover into manure. Thanks, Tank. Blessings. Love your work, bro. Keep going. Get back to work. Yes, good boy. So yeah. So here's our next. Like I said, here's our next garden bed. And effectively, all of these garden beds, when the le legality changes, will obviously all flip straight to cannabis. No. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the, the food gardens just to cover, to make sure that we're able to buy bulk loads of fertilizers and soils without bringing attention to our, our garage grow house. What? No. <laughs> hey, you wouldn't the... be the first person to use that methodology, allegedly. I, I allegedly, that's the classic standard of having a garden. Bro, you've got such a wonderful garden. I know, right? I know. And you smoke some Mickey skunk weed. Yeah, my friend grows that, allegedly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So that's a big tour. We've got these netting things, as you can well imagine. We ha have so many. Right now for some of that, eh? Yeah. That oh, it's mainly for sun? cut down the sun, but mainly for the birds and the caterpillars because we are no spray, you know. We've got yeah, plants yeah, with holes yeah. all through them. Plants with holes yeah. all through them, you know what I mean? But... You pay more for plants with holes in them because they're good enough to eat by the bugs. Oh, yeah. The, the damage causes the plant to have to Stress. create more amino acids or, or, or more um, antioxidants to protect itself, therefore making the plant healthier. That's right. So, But we've got to stay on top of it. And some Is that three-sided enclosure was your compost area that we walked by? Was your, uh, was your first uh, yes, yes. space? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's the fertilizer, composting, all the old plants just go into a pile. Um, here's here's our beautiful rain, rainbow chard. Nice. S gay, or as we call it down here, down under, gay silver beet. Ah, uh, joke. Sorry. <laughs> I'm a comedian. I'm not a racist, sexist. I'm not non-judgmental. But rainbow chard, um, obviously, you know, so cool when you get silver beet that's like, how Magenta. many uh, pulls do you find you get out of your shard down there? Well, we've harvested, as you can see, we're just letting them grow and harvesting, letting them grow and harvesting. Um, we think we've had six harvests from this so far. So Nice, nice work, man. That's, uh, yeah. If you overstress those plants and go on them too hard, people like will, will stress them into flower and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so, but it's like it's great when you get a few. That that has happened here to this bed, I believe, and they were pulled out. I think our um, broccoli all went to flower. I believe it was like underwatered. That's one. That's our main problem. Like we real realistically should be not pheno hunting, but hunting for water. You know, uh, water resistance, or rather, the ability to grow in Rotorua with no water would be the preferable yeah. strain of cannabis that all the cannabis farmers would like. You know, nobody likes to walk two kilometres into the hills with. 20 kilograms of water i mean the payout hey the payout's worth it you know hey it's not a camping trip it's a you know, horticultural experience but you know if we can get the if we can get the strain that produces big full fat nugs with no water that's the that's the hunting i should be doing but nobody's impressed with my logic they're all like bro we want big fat nugs and we want them skunky and smelly and it doesn't matter. We'll water them. I'm like, very, but we don't have water. This is the argument we're making. Like, no water. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's that's anyway, your compost we... bin that you've been working on for the last. Yeah, bit, two right? years, three years. Nice. So it goes in that one, uh, worm worm bin. I think they're all sleeping, but that's, somebody's no can't, that, this, Slater beetles, little roll rollers. Yeah. Very cool. Ew, what is that tank that you have there? What what's that? What did did you just build uh, it's that a bath, out of? Bathtub. 
bus tub. <laughs> old iron, old iron bus tub. Yeah. yeah. I love that. So, I fucking love yeah. that. I, who did I see Repurpose. Do that? Yeah, you got to You got to use what you have, man. Sometimes that's right. It's about like maximizing the uses of stuff that you have out of them and, and what their potential is. Like they, 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 they can be a great benefit. You know, Especially when you're in Alaska. In dump, right. That's right. That's right. So. So yeah, that's um oh so how I became Hemp Star Christ or Dacta Christ. Um so Hemp Star, you're obviously aware that hempsters are from California and in, in America if you're a hempster. And so I changed the name Hempster to Hemp Star out of respect to the uh music that I sent you from Gangstar. Because I'm not a gangstar, I'm a hemp star because I grow hemp. And I grow hemp for the people, like a boss. And yeah, here's our water, water catchment. Like when I said before, when the river behind my tent flows, we can pump it straight into these thousand liter containers. Um, oh. Here's the water where we normally pump from. But look, you see, bam, 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 dry riverbed. Yeah. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> so you, Nothing. when does it usually it dries out each year no yes yes sir like the big river dries out so this little river dries out it comes from the hills but this is where i was showing uh shango and Leighton all my beautiful uh rock formations rocks. my shales my crumbly rocks yeah some of them are high in iron like i'll break this bad boy open and you'll see from the coloration yeah it's heavily hot heavily high in iron our rocks wow. start rust, rusting from the inside out. I don't know if you can slightly see that orange, but that's rust. Yeah. And that rust indicates that that rock is high in iron. Now, I haven't quite worked out how to use mineral rock dust because it's like, you know, I've only heard of it for the last six months and been doing as much research whilst cultivating cannabis, well, networking on the global interwebs while cannabis farming to over 2,000 plants, you know, right around life but yes many a, many a different colored rocks many a different breakages it's, some split it, off into i feel cubes. like i'm looking at hercules right now the way you grab those rocks and <laughs> break them apart with your head like how are you yeah. doing that like it's i feel like you know like when you you know the old story with the with the the giant and the cheese where you squeeze <sighs> the cheese and get the water out but he instead the giant it with a rock like I feel like yes. I, I feel like you're you're pulling that off right now. You're amongst you're amongst giants. That's right. Herculean in the of men. giants. Herculean men down here yeah. in New Zealand. Yeah, uh, I should have bluffed you and said, "Watch me crumble this rock." Yeah. When Locke asked if a kiwi ate a kiwi, then got eaten by another kiwi, <laughs> what would that mean? Maybe I have a bird in my tummy which has eaten some fruit. <laughs> that would be an F3 or an F2? That would be an F3 or an F2. We're not too be, sure. Yeah, not too sure. <laughs> it dep yeah, was that kiwi a direct family member of the first kiwi? I think would be the answer to that. And then I'd be able to tell you what that was. But it might be an F2, might be an F3, back cross. I'm not sure. But yeah, it's the fun and games things of playing with the genetics that we have and looking for the outliers and... Yeah. Like he's nice said toilets toilets that flush make your hands soft. <laughs> <laughs> you. No, we have we have a fifteen foot hole um, that we uh, drop some saw, sawdust on top of. Um, don't currently have toilets that flush right here. Sadly, <laughs> here's the other here's the other side of my can of car. Look at this. I can't quite get that color. Some nice reds and purples, Green, some greens, yeah. some oranges, some more purples. Whoop, whoop. So my, my friend down in the South Island, follow him yeah. on Instagram, Trico Medical, premier quality craft cannabis. He's uh, got his medicinal license and he's got an export agreement to Australia with his medical cannabis. So big ups to Tim, Trico and them. Is New Zealand providing a lot of medical cannabis to Australia? Is that commonplace? No, no, that's only just started. So we legalized medicinal cannabis three years ago, uh, maybe five years ago. Time, there is no time. Um, and then it's taken, obviously, all the big corporations 
a while to get their um, millions of dollars together and their million dollar, multi-million dollar facilities built. So we've gone for GMP standards, but our government has said we want New Zealand GMP standards, which is going to be one standard up from Canadian GMP standards, two steps up from European uh, GMP standards, and like five steps up from American GMP standards. So basically our GMP standard is going to be five gold echelon stars and if you don't produce in a GMP certified facility using all GMP, GMP certified stainless steel rady, 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 equipment, you can't just grow herb in your back closet and then ship it internationally or nationally or even call it a medicine because medicinal even cannabis. Even outdoor cultivation of medicine? Not yet. Well, that's, well, that's what we're trying to work on with the R&D for the company that we've been contracted to. So we have been contracted as the outdoor legacy farmers to produce some form of outdoor cannabinoid medicines that will then be run through their giant CO2 extraction machine that they have. And then hopefully without the intoxicants in it and the correct paperwork to follow, um, that should be able to be turned into oils but we currently don't have a raw uh, leaf for sale in this country we will be getting that in the next four months i believe we are going to be white labeling some maybe canadian maybe german like raw leaf you said products. like raw plant matter like like for oh, flour egg. sorry flour okay yeah so we currently don't have the ability to produce raw flour for sale for consumption um, although in Australia, their laws aren't quite as tight as ours. So they have raw flour medicines for sale in Australia. So a little bit upsetting because my brothers both live in Australia and they're like, bro, you could just like get your doctor to like prescribe you some. I'm like, yeah, not in here. It would still be prescribed Marinol, um, uh, Sativex, Alexanol. Um, I think there's five of them. But yeah, I think there's only now two of them because I believe three of the five aren't even GMP certified and have lost their ability to be sold as cannabis medicines in this country. So even the big guys are suffering. Um, but yeah, I don't know, you know, corporate, co corporate life, backhand life, shady dealings, life, keeping the weak suppressed life, you know, but all we can do is do what we can where we can with good intentions and faith that everything's going to be all right. Everything's exactly. going to be all right. So exactly. here I am. Live the best you can Live. every single day. That's the one. Living my dream. Living your dream, London, with all my phenos. All my different <laughs> plant structures. Well, yeah. I'll visit you one day. I've always wanted to go to New Zealand. I haven't hit that part of the world yet. But I will I will have yes. to be there one of these times and I'm sure I will get to chat on that little farm. Do you wanna we're, tell like do you wanna tell people a little bit about where they can find you, how they can link up with you, what they can do to like, you know, say hello, uh, send you some seeds and that type of thing, allegedly. <laughs> Uh, and allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. Uh, uh, before my, we my, before we finish up the the day, all good. Get, yeah, my get IG working in our farms in our in our gardens. Yeah, I mean the the sun has now been up for uh, an hour and a bit, and yeah, although there's dew on the water, it has been an extraordinarily hot day. I personally drank four liters of water yesterday while building the hut in midday sun, topless, you know, build a life. Shout out to Leighton at the beach topless. I'm uh, like topless uh, on the hemp farm building. So although I came here to be a cannabis farmer, I told the boss, you know, use me for my strengths. My strengths is trade qualifier carpentry. So the other volunteers can go and do all their fun jobs inside the high security facility growing cannabis in what seems like a prison, whereas I'll stay here looking after my 200 hemp plants. I promise to stay on top of the male pollen. Um, so I don't get to visit the rural bioscience facility as much as I had thought this time last year, if you know what I mean. I hadn't thought that I would have been uh, building. I left Auckland and I left corporate building life and $100,000 a year salary building and construction to come here to volunteer to get back into construction but hey the ironies of life i'm a volunteer i do not complain i use my strengths where my strengths are and i am a carpenter so building I'll people huts this, that will be able to live in the hill is god's gift from me to them yes sir you say
I, I'll say this, man. It's sometimes it. I, I, in my personal opinion, I believe life is a cumulative thing. We ha- we go through stages and we learn things, and these learnings and processes that we go through, whether they seem completely separate or not integrated, whether they seem completely unrelated whatsoever, um, they they actually end up being a cumulative point that becomes the big thing that you end up doing or, or, or that part of it. Like I, I, I really like it might not have seemed like, Oh, I need to be working construction, but it's been the point that's put you to help you at where you're at right now. Like you, you, these points are so necessary in our lives and it's all just around. What a beautiful view. I know. And, and, and I speak Testament to that where I, you know, Thank, thanked my abusive stepfather um, uh, in teaching me the ways of being a builder and allowing me to get my trade certificate and keeping me on the straight and narrow the best way he knew how with the backhand when I was a child. But he also gave me the work ethics of a tradesman that can work 14 hours a day and be up at four to make sure that the concrete's getting poured on time and staying late till midnight to make sure that the plumber's got walls that he can plumb the next morning, you know? And now here I am in the garden where tasks must be achieved at certain times of the day. And so that's given me the construction workers' ethics and tradesmen's standards. If you're growing cannabis to a tradesman's like standards, as I say in the industry, anybody can be a builder, but it's that next level of attention to detail and time and love and heart that you put in as a tradesman. And we have in the building industry a saying that, oh, you know, that's close enough, or she'll be right. Whereas my dad would put me around the back of the head, unscrew it, move it, and re-screw it. Like, if it's not actually right, it's not okay. Like, this is like, uh, she'll be right. No. It's okay. No. It's perfect. Yes. Within a half millimeter, I use an engineer's ruler. I build like I have previously built multi-million dollar homes for you know, millionaires. Lawyers, offices, high-rise buildings, all of the... I was lucky enough, because of my elder who took me to Tonga, I built a Mormon temple in Tonga as a suspended ceiling installer. And so I was there for two months building a Mormon temple because we uh, were the best ceiling installers for the job. And so I'm grateful to my my elders for yeah, bringing me along on these trips and journeys, which have made me resilient to... You know, living off grid. I don't know if you know about Tonga, but they recently just got bombarded by a underwater volcano and had tsunamis and the likes mm. devastate their little island just three, three or five days ago. Um, yeah, shout out to all my Tongan friends. Much love. So I'm actually not not a Kiwi. I'm actually a Pacific Islander. And by definition, most people laugh at me and look at me because I'm white. Say, bro, you're not a Pacific Islander. What's up? I'm like, bro. I was born in Aotearoa, New Zealand, in the Pacific Ocean. I am a Pacific Islander. I'm not British. My grandfathers were Scottish and Irish, but we tried to run away from that. Sadly, some of them ran away in like reformed corporate capitalist ventures and slave ownership and all those other things that come with them. Um, you know, somebody's got to be the wor- worker and somebody's got to be the the owner. Whereas, like you know, that's not the it's not the true true as we all know we should all be our own men or women or zers or zems or zays or zers or the other 36 acronyms for the alleged names that canadian people call each other these days shout out to all the confused people i'm sure you'll pick a the gender reveal the joke on the gender reveal anyway i'm just joking i love all humans sizes um, whatever, as I was saying with my genetics of my plants, here yeah. I am. Well, you definitely will put anything you can in the ground. Well, I'm going to say thank you, Christ, for being the first on uh, on cannabis for breakfast. Uh, I, I I had an awesome freaking time. That is an amazing view. Thank you so much for taking the time out and, and joining me for this. Uh, this little little jaunt. This is fucking great. This was this was absolutely brilliant. There's that pretty face we all know and love. Coming back and pushing my settings button. New to this uh, streamyard.com. Shout out to streamyard.com. So here I am in my full camo gear. 
Um, you'll know it's camouflaged because I can hide in a cannabis field. Yeah, that's, that's right, why nobody pants. could see you on the camera in the garden. The whole time. You were, you were right. in the camera, but you were just completely... No one I turned could, on. No one could get you. Shadow, shadow mode. So shout, shout out to Bob Marley. We're in a beautiful... Uh, whoop, where's it? Bob Marley. Uh, Rastafarian. Organic uh, Bob Marley hat uh, from uh, Billabong, of all things. But it's organic cotton. Yeah, I'm not slanging no names. I'm just slanging some organic cotton on my sweaty ass head. <laughs> Yo, so here's me in the bush, peeps. Love awesome. you. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for all taking, if you've stuck around for an hour and 50 minutes, my rants. The rants of a highly stressed cannabis farmer. Woo! <laughs> no. Much love. And uh, as I lay down here, I'm just going to get myself stoned a little bit later on. And so, yeah. <laughs> as you say, job less. Uh, as I say, and many people around me say, job less, one love. And uh, this is actually our club sign. If you know the Bloods and the Crips. Oh, I don't know how to work this camera. So this is obviously the Bloods. This is the Crips. And then this is the Dactors. Yeah. Yeah. And so the Dactors got this, yeah. <laughs> so that's our hand signal, you know, because all good uh, clubs need a good hand signal. So if you're there, London, can you shout out, throw up your Dactor? <laughs> Throw up your hand sign, Sam. Come on, London. What? I don't, you got to throw up. You got to throw up your hand sign. I'm not throwing up a hand sign. Bro. <laughs> You're not All throwing right. up. You and don't throw up hand that, signs in Canada. And no, uh, no. And with that, well, that, the problem is, is you don't know what country you're throwing a hand sign up towards. I know. <laughs> you know I know. Oh, I don't know. I don't. Know. But that's how you know. I know you're rusted foreign. You're your screen well, spores, by the way. I, what, hmm? I know I'm Canadian. Screen so goes, Put a hands on. You're like, no, I don't want to. It sounds dangerous. <laughs> That's how you know you're Canadian. <laughs> like, it hey, sounds risky no, to me. <laughs> yeah. No affiliation. No affiliation other than Rastafarianism and <laughs> cannabis culture affiliation. And yeah, that's our D. So throw up your D if you want to be with me. I'm a dectivist. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a doctor of medicine. I'm a dactor of medicine, you know? I've done bro science and clinical human researching myself for over 20 years. And I believe in my plant medicine of choice. And I believe in deck 